Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that. And last time, we discussed the courage of Jesus. Today, the respectfulness of Jesus. Was Jesus respectful? When and to whom? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you are like to whited sepulchres, which outwardly appear to men beautiful, but within are full of dead men's bones and of all filthiness. Matthew twenty-three twenty-seven. Jesus was clearly not respectful to everyone, which, if anything, just goes to show that respectfulness is not always best. Some people should be treated with public respect, while others routinely do horrible things, making it important to warn people about them, as Jesus does to his disciples. All things, therefore, whatsoever they shall say to you, observe and do, but according to their words do ye not, for they say and do not. Matthew 23, 3 However, there are many people who are better than the Pharisees, and many people who deserve more respect than them. There are also many ways to respect people. For one thing, by treating them honestly and virtuously, a consistent theme in Jesus' life. And a certain scribe came and said to him, Master, I will follow thee whithersoever thou shalt go. And Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. Matthew eight nineteen to 20 Here, a scribe offers to become one of the followers of Jesus. In those times, becoming someone's follower usually meant that they would take time to teach you and instruct you in what you needed to do. In the case of scribes, this usually didn't involve a lot of traveling, but Jesus warns this scribe that if he really wants to follow Jesus, he'll need to be prepared for constant travel. Tax collectors, fishermen, zealots, and missionaries were used to traveling to do their work, but for a scribe, being a follower of Jesus would have been a jarring experience, and Jesus is up front with him about that. Jesus was often like this with those who wanted to be his disciples, even telling Peter his eventual fate long before it happened. Sadly, though, the scriptures don't say whether the scribe from these passages actually did follow Jesus or not. And one of the multitude said to him, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. But he said to him, Man, who hath appointed me judge or divider over you? Luke twelve, thirteen to 14 While these may not sound like words of respect, Jesus is actually showing respect for this man and his brother, recognizing and confirming their rights over their own possessions, as well as reminding them that they can and should resolve issues like these between the two of them. He warns the man against covetousness, but ultimately leaves the decision in their hands, because while God does have certain things that he expects of us, he also respects us enough to leave us in charge of certain matters in our own lives. And the wine failing, the mother of Jesus saith to him, They have no wine. And Jesus saith to her, Woman, what is that to me and to thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother saith to the waiters, Whatsoever he shall say to you, do ye. John 2 3 to 5. Finally, we have an incident of Mary, the mother of Jesus, telling Jesus that there's no wine at the wedding feast. Now, wedding feasts were long and joyful celebrations in ancient Jewish culture, and it was expected that there would be enough wine for everyone to last the whole feast. Jesus' reply sounds disrespectful to the modern ear, but the original text translates into something more like, Woman, what to me to thee? There are more theories about what Jesus meant by his use of the word woman, but because of his perfection, we can suppose that it was meant to be an honorable title. Likewise, his statement to her carries the flavor of a warning, that what she's asking of him will carry consequences that will affect them both. Still, the warning doesn't stop her, and she tells the waiters to obey Jesus. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three measures apiece. Jesus saith to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And Jesus saith to them, Draw out now, and carry to the chief steward of the feast. 
and they carried it. John 2, 6-8 After this, we have the realization that the water has become wine. Despite his warning to Mary, Jesus did obey her implied request, showing both that he cares about her enough to warn her about what she's really asking him for, and that despite everything, he's willing to honor and obey her as every son should honor and obey their mother, unless, of course, their mother is telling them to sin. So, Jesus was not uniformly respectful to everyone. He called some people out for doing evil, referring to them as the hypocrites they were. However, he was also upfront and direct with what he required of people who wanted to follow him, didn't dominate people's personal affairs, and was respectful and obedient to his mother Mary. In the same way, we should distribute respect to people who we owe it to, but not just toss it around like a cheap party candy. Not everyone deserves to be respected. Next time, the prudence of Jesus. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.